In this session, I'm going to go over some of the basic functions in Microsoft Excel. So now that we opened Excel, we will go under the Basic Concepts tab here in the bottom. Let's say we wanted to calculate the office expenses. We have all of these cells. In each one of those cells, you can type texts, the numbers and values and such. It can be a general number, it can be a specific number, currency, accounting type of format numbers, dates, percentages. You can format these cells or the values in the cells in percentages, fractions, and scientific notations and text. So here we basically want to calculate the expenses for our office. Now for each month we have recorded the amounts and then we want to get the total for the training for each category. Also we want to get the totals for each month down here. First we want to format these currency. We simply select those specific cells, go up here under the number grouping, and then click on the drop down and we choose currency. Currency is going to put that dollar sign in front of it and the other two decimal points. You can do it from here or you can click on this dollar amount in here. If you're using various other currencies, you can pick those in here. Now let's say that we wanted to get the totals for trainings. All of those calculations are performed by using formulas. To perform any calculations in Excel, start with an equal sign followed by some kind of function. Now the function itself can be any of those in here. So if we click on the formulas, click on function, the functions can be financial functions, any of those that you see right here, logical functions, uh, lookup and reference, math and trigonometry. So if we wanted to look at the whole list of them here under all, notice that there are hundreds of functions that you can utilize in Excel. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, we are just going to learn about some of those functions so that you get the concepts. And then once you know how this stuff works, then you can go and explore this even furthermore on your own. So for example, here, I, I clicked here under formulas and I chose insert function in case you wanted to find what sum does. Typing in there, click the go here. Notice it says it adds numbers in a range of cells. So if we go back here to get the sum of those numbers, like I mentioned earlier, you need to start with the equal sign, the word sum, and then you can open parentheses. And then here you can reference the actual starting point, which would be B6. Notice you have uh, column B and then the row is number six. So you type in there B6. This is the manual way that we are learning to do this at this point, and then colon. This means anything from that starting point to, let's say, D, to where it says here for March training, which would be D6. And then close parentheses and hit enter. So that's one way to do this. So notice now the calculation, it's 700. If January's training expenses were 250, notice the total will change automatically. And that's the beauty of Excel. That's why you use formulas and calculations and you use this tool. So that's one way to enter the formula in here. So here we say sum and you can press tab and it will put the capital letters and also the parentheses thing. Then you can either tap in here the starting point. So notice it's 300 and it puts B7 automatically so you don't have to gauge it where it uh, goes horizontally and vertically where they meet and also you can put their colon and then the end point or you can simply select the cells that you want to add up and notice it will put the colon in there automatically and then all you have to do is you hit enter so again before I hit enter to summarize it you press the equal sign telling the computer that you're going to calculate something in there to start a formula. Then you put the function, which is in this case, it's the sum, adding those numbers. And then we simply selected what the range that we want it to select. Then hit enter and notice the amount here has been calculated. In most cases in business, most individuals also use this function here, the automatic calculation. So let's suppose that I didn't have 
either one of those and I want uh, calculation in here. Notice that under the home tab and then under auto sum, it automatically will add up a bunch of uh, cells and the values in them. You click on it and the computer is going to select those items automatically. You hit enter here and it gives you the calculation. Now, what about if I wanted to do the calculation over here? Notice it's going to try to do the selection as well. Now, you, of course, you could adjust that selection before hitting enter, and that's another way of doing it. Now, I showed you the manual way before because that's going to be more accurate, and it also gives and reinforces the concept as to how this works. So now, if we wanted to get the totals for January here, we could do it either way. We could either use the automatic calculation here on the top right on the home tab, or we could do it the manual way and select the range and then hit enter. Next here, how can we populate the same formulas here that we entered in this cell for these other ones without having to do it manually for each one of them? Instead of us spending time to enter the formulas here in each cell, we can simply replicate what's entered in this cell, which by the way, here is what's entered in that cell behind the scenes. This is the formula bar here on the top. Now to replicate it, notice there is a little dot here on the bottom right. All you have to do is you hold the mouse on the bottom right and then drag far down you want to go. And notice the computer is going to calculate everything for the subsequent rows. Whenever you do this, try to double check the work. And the way you do that is that you click on any of these calculations then you come here under the formula bar and then see what's being calculated. So it's getting us a sum of B12 all the way through D12, which is B12, that's the 13 here, and then all the way to D12. So spot check that work before you submit something that you'll later regret that it was not calculated correctly. If we wanted to do the calculation here as well uh, for the totals for, for each month, you can do it the same way. So you can go to the bottom under this dot and then drag the mouse to the right. This works vertically top down and horizontally from left going to the right. Notice we got a bunch of these number signs in here, and this is a very common thing that that means that the column is not wide enough. And all you have to do is either drag this to the right a little bit manually like that, or by double clicking between the columns here, C and D, and the computer it's going to adjust it exactly to the widest value in any of the cells. And we do that for the next one as well. The autofill feature works for anything sequential. It can also work for days of the week or a specific uh, sequence of numbers that you have. So for example, if we have here Monday and then we want to replicate the other days of the week, you can simply drag this down and you have all the other days of the week. If you wanted to do it for months of the year, just type the name of the month, drag it down, and it will replicate the months and keep on going. It can also work for sequences of numbers. Now you can drag this down by selecting those two values and notice it'll do 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Let's say we wanted to learn about formatting and making this look slightly nicer. You can select any of those cells and then notice you have these styles. It's very similar to the styles and formatting styles in Microsoft Word. We can either click on the drop down and pick any of those designs and notice uh, it's giving us what's called a live preview. So you can do this for all the cells in here. The other thing that you can do is you can simply select here the whole table and you can choose format as a table and then you can pick one of those designs and click OK here and now notice applied that specific design in there instead of us doing it manually and I just undid it for now. The other thing to keep in mind is conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is a tool that you can utilize to easily spot trends and patterns in your data using bars, colors, icons to visually highlight important ones. So in this case, we just want to pinpoint 
which ones were the highest expenses in our data set here. So we go here under conditional formatting and you have all of these different rules. So you can choose to show anything greater than a specific value, anything less than, anything that equals, or duplicate values to highlight them and things of that nature. Also the top 10 and the bottom 10%. So if you had, if you wanted to identify the top 10 items, top 10 sales and such, all you have to do is you just pick any of those. You can do data bars. So basically it'll give you a little chart similar to that or you can do color coded and you can create your own rule as well and your own criteria. So for now, I'm just simply going to use the color coding and uh, this basically puts a little chart within each cell to give us the uh, definition of uh, the items with a higher value in them. So if we change this to 5,000, notice everything else will be readjusted. Now we can do it for the total conditional formatting and let's say we want color-coded for a range of cells. Mm -hmm.